But the Negro, he does not, under no circumstances, want to bring these actions into play because they don't fit the narrative. Now, often Sterling knew that he was a convicted sex offender. He knew this. So being a convicted sex offender, you know you can't carry no weapon, dude. Why are you carrying a gun as a convicted felon? That's the reason why he didn't want to comply with those officers, because he knew, one, I'm a convicted felon, and I got a gun on me. So if I comply with them and they find this gun on me and find out that I'm a convicted felon, I already know what it is. So he refuses to comply with a very simple demand. If you ain't done anything, get on the ground, let's get this resolved. But the Negro, because of the cult of anti-intellectualism, will say no matter what he done, he would have been shot because he is a black male. This is what they believe. They do not ever want to address the role that these individuals played in their own demise. They refuse to address it. And what's really troubling about this is that you have a Negro standing out front a Arab corner store. This is, this is tough. Now, I've already been very thorough with y'all on what takes place in these Arab corner stores. Everybody knows it. It's not a secret. And when I've done my first video on this, I've gotten messages from people from the proverbial four corners of the globe all saying the exact same thing about those stores. Everyone knows what goes on in those stores. Everybody. Yet it's still black men who are supposed to be the kings and the, the rulers of their community are drawn to these airborne stores like a moth to a flame. And they hang out there all day, every day, just hanging out. In and out, in and out the store all day, every day, just hanging out. That's what they do. We have Mr. Sterling hanging outside the Arab corner store selling bootleg CDs. Selling bootleg CDs outside of an Arab corner store that exploits not only the, that community, but the women of that community. Yet the black male has no problem being a buddy with this guy because he's allowing him to stand out front of his store and sell his bootleg CDs. As he stands out front of the store selling his bootleg CDs, keep in mind now he has a wife, I imagine it was his wife, and five children. So you, you, you literally have mouths that you have to feed, brother. How many mouths can you feed selling bootleg CDs? And it's the same question that I would have for Eric Garner, who also had a wife and children at home, but he's selling new cigarettes. I mean, <laughs> and you're in New York, so I know that ain't covering your rent. So I mean, what, why are you not on somebody's job, man? Why are you hanging outside an airborne store at midnight when you should be either getting off somebody's job or on your way to somebody's job? Because after all, you have five miles you got to feed, brother. But black men, I'm telling you, they don't want to address this. They don't want to bring this up. And what they're going to say is, well, there ain't no justification for him being shot. No, it's not. You're actually, you're right. I'll give you that. No, no, not at all. But what that is, is an example of the decisions that these brothers made that helped and that led to their demise. Now, if you're going to be fair and balanced, you got to deal with both sides of that. If you're just going to deal with the racial component, oh, these cops shot him. They gunned him down. They racist. And because that's the easy part. 
Because that's the part that fits the narrative of victimization. And then when you try to explain to them if he would have complied with the request of those officers, would he have still been shot in the chest? Anti-intellectualism will have them saying yes. This is what I told y'all permeates black America. And I told y'all the call, I mean the victimization, the doctrine of victimization alleviates any responsibility. So when you talk about the fact that he has a wife and he has five children, yet he's selling used CDs, or not used CDs, he's selling bootleg CDs. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure how many pairs of shoes that's going to buy. But nobody wants to address this. Nobody wants to talk about that. That is ignored and never brought into question. No one will bring that up because you're not allowed to discuss that because it doesn't fit the narrative. And it's the same when you go down the list and you look at all of these individuals that Black Lives Matter has adopted as the face of their movement. And all of these individuals are shady in their, with the exception of Tamir Rice. And there may be others, but with the exception of Tamir Rice, the rest of those individuals, and again, don't come at me saying, well, you're saying it just justifies, no, that's not saying that that justifies them being shot. What it says is that they played a part and you cannot ignore the role that they played in their own demise. I told y'all, this is what black men do. This is what they do. And, and, and I told y'all in many of my videos because black men, for the most part, have been reared by single women. They bicker and they argue and they fuss back and forth just like women. That's what they do. You grow up with a father in your home, a disciplinarian, a father who ain't putting up with no gut. You're going to learn to respect authority. And respecting authority does not always mean that you're going to like what the authority says. You learn that when you have a father who is in the home who is playing an active role in teaching you, this is my house. You abide by my rules. If you cannot abide by my rules, then you need to get out and get your own place and then you can abide by your rules. But as long as you're under my roof, as long as you're eating my food, you're going to do what I tell you to do. Now, you ain't got to like that. And you already know what the option is. But you learn to respect that. And that carries over into your adult life. It carries over on your job with your supervisors and those who are over you. And it most certainly carries over when you deal with cops on the street. I ain't got to like this guy. I ain't got to like nothing about him. I'm going to comply with what he asks. Let's get this over with. If you're going to arrest me, arrest me. If you're going to give me a ticket, give me a ticket. Let me go on about my business. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not fussing with you, bickering back. I'm, it's, a, it's a waste of time. But black men will stand there and argue and fuss and try to bicker with cops. Because this was a black man watch their mothers do and this is what they learn. That's how they interact. That's the reason why you see black men constantly bickering, arguing, debating back and forth. That's why. They got that shit from their mothers. In every one of these cases where you have these individuals running into these cops, they have no respect for authority. Because respect for authority makes you comply. You don't have to like it, but I'm going to respect the authority. I'm going to submit to that authority, and I'm going to go on about my business. I'm not going to challenge this authority here, because there's other avenues whereby you can challenge that authority, but it's just not going to be done right here, right now. 
Right here, right now, I'm on, I need you on the ground. You can't challenge my authority right now. You have to comply with it. And you can do so willingly or you can do so with force. It's up to you. Now, when you've got a father in the home and you understand this dynamic, you comply and go on about your business and go through the chain of command to complain about that authority. I don't like this. I don't like that. But you can't do that on that right then and there. You just can't do it. Black men don't understand this. Because black men, for the most part, are effeminate, catty, bitchy. They bicker back and forth just like women. And you watch them. You watch them on social media. This is what they do. All day, every day. These are the things that nobody will want to discuss with this Alton Sterling. They won't bring it up. It won't be addressed. No one will even begin to touch this because it's tough. Because it speaks volumes as to the image of black men. And listen, listen, this ain't no created image. Brother, y'all brought this on yourselves. Y'all brought this on yourselves. I've been telling y'all in many of my classic videos, you Negroes are the laughing stock of civilization. No one takes you serious. No one takes you as a legitimate threat. You're not a threat in terms of anything positive. No, what you are, you're a laughing stock. You're a joke. Because here you stand as a man with five mouths to feed. Now listen, these children weren't given to you. You're the one that laid down with that woman. You're the one that impregnated her five times. Those are your responsibility. And instead of you owning up doing what you have to do for the mouths that you created, you out selling single CDs, or in the case of Eric Garner, single cigarettes, as if that's going to buy one tube of toothpaste. I mean, black men, you're sorry. I mean, there's just no other way around this, man. I'm sorry. I mean, I know this is tough. I told y'all this is tough. It's tough. But you're sorry. That's the reason why people look at you the way they do. And then you have all of these other Negroes who refuse to call that shit out and to check that shit and tell black men, listen, man, y'all got to start doing better. Fuck that. Yes, on one hand, we want these cops to respect the black community, respect black people. Yes, we want that. But on the other hand, black man, you got to do better. You got to get your ass out in front of that airborne corner. Matter of fact, you need to organize and shut that store down. Open your own store. Sell your CDs outside of your own store. But nobody wants to deal with that. No one will address that. Like Emma Fudd, shh. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> I told y'all it was tough. At the end of the day, <laughs>